morning. On the morning. Let me see the hands that are truly waiting on the morning. Amen. Yes, I'm Lord. waiting. I'm waiting. On the morning. On the morning. Amen. That's like somebody wait on a bus. Psalm wait five. on a cab. Psalm huh? 30, wait on a friend. Five. Wait on whatever. I'm Six. waiting. What you waiting for? I'm waiting for in the morning. Amen. Because there's something mystical. Amen. About the next day. The old saying said things look better in the morning. Come on, say amen. amen. Have you ever went through something at nighttime? Mm -hmm. And it was terrible. It was horrific. Yes, it was almost unbearable. Yes. But look like when morning came. Yes. Oh, I preach if y'all help me. Yes. Amen. You may have still been stunned, but it felt a little better. Yes. Because there's something gives about the morning. Yes. Amen. I preached a sermon years ago. If I can just make it through the night, yes. everything will be all right. And I'm looking at uh, you all here today. I'm looking at a collection of homes. Amen. I'm looking at somebody in this congregation. As small as it may be, you are in a night season. Yes. Amen. All of us will have a night season. Yes. Amen. You're going to have a season in your life where everything right goes wrong. Yes. You're going to have a season in your life where uh, the bottom is going to fall out. You're going to have a season in your life where your back is going to be up against the wall. You're going to have a season in your life that as good as you know how to do, there's going to be some things you ain't going to know how to do nothing about. Amen. That's called the season of night. Amen. Just as sure as it's summer, spring, winter, and fall, there's going to be a season of night in your life. Uh, it was, I believe, Solomon, the wisest man in the world, David's son, who said that there is nothing new under the sun. Solomon said there's a time and a season for everything. He said there's a season to die, there's a season to be born, there's a season to laugh, there's a season to cry, there's a season to reap, there's a season to sow. Come on, y'all. There's a season when you're up. There's a season when you're down. There's a season when your purse is running over with money. There's a season when you ain't got a nickel or a nail. Come on, y'all. Amen. So life is full of seasons. But here's something to shout about. Here's something to dance about. Here's something to get happy about. That no matter if it's summer, winter, spring, or fall, those seasons can't stay always. In other words, after a while, winter may come. But eventually, winter is going to have to give way to spring. And then after a while, spring is going to have to give way to summer. Come on, say amen, y'all. Huh? In other words, it can't stay summer all the time. It can't stay winter all the time. Amen. Just as show as the Bible said in the book of Deuteronomy, as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest, summer, winter, spring, and fall. That means as long as the world is turning, the seasons are going to change. But there are those of you here that are listening to me, you may be in a night season in your life. You may be in a season where nobody understands you. You may be in a season where you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulder. You may be in a season where you feel like, amen, you're not going to get well because the sickness is in your body and the devil has told you you're going to die and the devil has told you you won't recover. You may be in a season where you're at wit's end. You may be in a season where you're about to have a nervous breakdown. You may be in a season where you're so pressured that you can't even enjoy your life. Talk to me, somebody. You may be in a night season. But I came to let somebody know that God works just as good in the morning as he does at night. Amen. Somebody ought to clap their hands about that. Amen. And that's a blessing to know that God can work in my night season just like he worked in my day season. Well, David could talk about this, Brother Wayne, because David knew about nighttime. David knew about the season of night in his life. David knew about that season when everything wrong went right. Right went wrong. David knew about that season when his back was up against the wall, when he was being between the devil and the deep red sea. David knew 
knew about that season when his number one ace boom coon friend turned his back on him. He knew about that season of backstabbers when folks stabbed you in the back. He knew about the season of ditch diggers when folk would dig ditches for you. I would preach it, y'all help me. He knew about the seasons of, amen, the different many difficulties and trials and tribulations in his life. He knew about it. How many of you know you can't tell nobody, you can't relate to nobody if you've never been there? How can you can relate to somebody hungry when you had food all of your life? How can you relate to somebody that's been to jail when you've never been to jail in your life? How can you relate to somebody that's been on drugs when you've never had a drug in your life? Until you've been there, you can't relate. You can sympathize, but you can't empathize. You can empathize when you actually been there. Huh? If you've never been on the front row of a funeral to see a loved one on over, you cannot say, I can relate to what you're going through until you have been there. And that's one thing about David. As you read the Psalms of David, David is talking out of life experiences. I want somebody that's going to talk to me out of their life experiences. Don't talk to me out of something you read a psychology book. Don't talk about something you got off the internet, but I want you to relate to me, Trina, out of your personal experiences. Because when you relate out of your personal experiences, it goes from your heart to my heart. And I can understand exactly what you're saying. But until I've been there and done that, I can't relate to what you're talking about. So we're looking at a man here, Brother Deacon, that was familiar with nighttime. He knew about the seasons of night that came into people's lives. David was able to pin this. He was able to put this pen to paper because of the things that he suffered and the things that he went through. I mean, know sometimes God will let you suffer for the benefit of somebody else. Not so much that it's for you, but listen, sometimes God will make a guinea pig out of you. God will use you as a guinea pig. You know why? Because he know what you can withstand. He know what you can go through. That's what he did to Job. Listen, let me tell you something. God had to know Job's reaction before Job went through what he went through. And God knew that Job was a man that the devil couldn't bring. God knew that Job was a man that the, devil, that the devil could not shake. And God knew Job better than Job knew himself. And God knew that Job was not going to turn his back on God. Job said this when he was going through. He said, though he slay me, he said, yet will I trust him. He said, but when he tried me, I'm going to come out as pure gold. He said, I know my redeemer living. Talk to me. And he shall speak and stand at that last day. Job couldn't say that if he didn't know God. God knew that Job knew God. That's because God was able to put Job through what he put him through. Y'all ain't talking to me here. Huh? God used Job as a guinea pig. Huh? But Job said, the Lord did it. The Lord taketh that what? And blessed be the name of the Lord. I wonder if anybody in here this evening that have ever gone through a nighttime experience. Have you ever been where David was? Have you ever been where Job was? Have you ever been where things were just going wrong? When if it wasn't one thing, it's another. If it wasn't one thing, it's the same old thing. If it wasn't him, her, them, those, this, that. I mean, every time you turn around, if it ain't one thing, it's another. When you get over this, here comes something else. Now, come on, y'all gonna talk to me. When you get over that, here comes something else. Amen. And you sitting there wondering what's next. Amen. You sitting there scared to answer the phone because every time you do it's some drama. You scared to answer the door because you don't know who's coming over. Talk to me here. I don't know sometimes life can just do you like that. You can go through so many trials and tribulations. But aren't you glad that we have his eternal word and his word said he won't put no more on us? That we're able to bear. And when it get too much on you, when it get too heavy on you, God will say, all right, that's enough now. When you get to where you're about to break, when you get to where you're about to have a nervous breakdown and lose your mind, God will tell the devil, that's enough now. Don't put no more on him. He can't say no more. Hallelujah. Come on and say, thank God. So David could relate. He could relate to this text. And if you notice in the text of, of Psalm 30 and 5, there's three things that stand out to me, Brother Deacon. There are three things that stand out to me. Three words that stand out to me. Favor, weeping, and joy. Those three things stand, stand out. Favor, weeping, and joy. Oh, that's powerful right there. Yeah. Say it with me. Favor, Favor weeping, weeping, 
and joy. See, when you read the word of God, you got to know how to get the nuggets out of it. You got to know how to get the revelation out of it. And I began to study that thing, Robert, and those three words stood out in, in bold red letters. Favor, weeping, at night. And I start thinking about favor. Hey, Amen. You know, I heard somebody say, God ain't fair. I heard somebody say favor ain't fair. Amen. But God is a fair God. He's no respect to person. Come on, say amen. He love on us all the same. Come on, somebody. Uh, but some of us just simply happen to have more favor than others. Amen. Now, that's a mystery of the ages. That's a question that will be answered when we get to glory. But until then, just leave that up to God. If you're favored, you're just favored. If you got it going on, you got it going on. Amen. Favor is mercy. Favor is grace. Favor is the gift of God. Talk to me somebody. Favor is grace. That's because God told Paul. He said, listen, I'm not going to remove this thorn. He went to God three times and he said, Lord, I got a thorn in my flesh that I need you to remove. And all three times when he asked God to move it, God would not move it. I preached a sermon a couple of weeks ago. Sometimes God said no. Y'all remember that? Sometimes God said no. And he asked God three times, Wayne. He, the Paul said, Lord, remove this thorn. And all three times God said no. God said, I'm going to let you live with it. He said, but I'm going to give you something to help you live with it. I'm going to give you some medicine called grace. And the word grace means favor. In other words Paul, even though you got the thorn in the flesh, I'm going to give you some of my favor. Y'all ain't talking to me. Even though you're going through, I'm going to give you favor. Even though everything is going wrong, I'm going to give you favor. Even though the back is falling out of it, I'm going to give you favor. Even though you're at the bottom of the rope, I'm going to give you favor. Talk to me here. I wonder that anybody in Mount Olive that got favor this morning. Yes, you got favor. How do you know I got it, Pastor? Because he woke you up this morning. You got favor because the blood is running warm in your veins. You got favor because you're cold and that was in your right mouth. You got food on your table. You got shoes on your feet. You got clothes on your back. You got favor, honey, because his grace and his mercy shall lead me all the days of my life. So I love that. I love that. I love that what David said in his favor is life. Tell somebody, favor is life. Oh yes, oh yes. Say it again. Favor, favor. is life. He's so right. when you got favor, you got life. I just said that then. I said it because you're alive. So if, if it's in his favor is life, then you, you're the example. You're the result of favor. The result of favor is life. I'm living because I got his favor. I'm alive because I got his favor. Somebody's dead and gone and in the ground, but I'm still here because I got his favor. Amen. In other words, I shouldn't get happy. I shouldn't get excited about myself. I shouldn't think it's about what I do that keeps me alive, but it's his grace that keeps me alive. It's his grace that keeps me in the morning. Talk to me, Somebody. My God, I never shall forget years ago when I was in that backsliding condition. Brother Robert living up there in, in Atlanta. And I felt that God had done me wrong. Amen. And I told God I wasn't going to preach no more. And I wasn't going to church no more. And I was sitting up there at that bar. And I was sitting up there drinking. And a fella next to me got to fight with another fella. My God, I did, had just bought a nice, amen, uh, a mustard green trench coat. Amen. The style of that time. And I was sitting up there drinking with my bowl self, with my crazy self, with my backslidden self, and the two men next to me got to fighting, and one of them took a beer bottle and hit the other on the head, and what I felt like was water ran all down the side of my coat. I was so high, I didn't know what it was. I got home the next morning and looked at the coat, it was full of blood. Y'all ain't talking to me. Oh my God, I said, thank God for his favor, because it could have been my blood. Come on, somebody. I'm just trying to show you how favored you are. You're favored, honey. You could have died in that car wreck. You could have died in that head on. You could be in the prison. You could be under the jail. You could be gone with a lost mind. You could be paralyzed. Come on, somebody. But for the favor of God, you could be laying up in a rehabilitation center. You could be a vegetable, not able to talk. You can be paralyzed from the waist up. But for the favor of God, some of y'all know what I'm talking about in here. You just look back over your life and look at the foolish things you've done and the crazy people you've been with that didn't care nothing about dying 
behind and you was riding right in their car while you was driving like a fool but for the grace of God the grace of God kept that car on the road kept them wheels to the ground come on somebody you were messing with this one that one and the third going with a married woman the man could have came and blew both of y'all brains out but for the grace of God I wish I had somebody in here that know what I'm talking about let me hear him say in his favor there is life. Lift those hands and wave them like you just don't care. And say, thank God for life. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad. My God, brother deacons, I'm glad for life. And listen, I'm standing here before you. Not as no angel, not as no saint. But I'm standing here before you, a man that has the grace of God. Not because of what I've done or because of I've been so good. But because of his mercy, I'm here today. Not only in his favor is life, but the second thing I I notice that weeping may endure for a night. Oh, talk to me somebody. That word night in I-G-H-T that night that separates PM from AM, that one second that separates one day from another. Midnight is mysterious. It's mysterious in its action. I don't know about y'all, but there's something mysterious about midnight. Look like folk act crazy at midnight. Oh my God, they change spirits at midnight. Oh, talk to me, somebody. Even in astrology, in astrology, the study of the stars, even in the zodiac, certain people with certain signs act crazy at midnight. It's just something mystical about that. Oh, let me hurry. Y'all gonna go to sleep on me, but I feel like preaching here. Let me hear the church say, even when I was clubbing, even when I was in the club, it was something about the club. Things didn't get off. Things didn't jump off until midnight. That's why we didn't get ready to a we didn't get ready to 10 30 because we knew when we got up in that midnight uh, my god that dj gonna pump that music uh, that liquor gonna flow y'all ain't talking to me uh, at midnight uh, all them cheap 1975 lines are gonna come out at midnight uh, the players are gonna step out uh, at midnight uh, everybody gonna try to go home with somebody at midnight uh, it's just something about midnight uh, that's mysterious uh, in the air uh, don't let it be halloween Y'all ain't talking to me. Then they really get crazy. Oh, but he said weeping may endure for a night. Well, what are you talking about, David? He don't mean a 24-hour night. Your night may be a second. Your night may be a month. Your night may be a year. Your night may be four years. Oh, man, but listen here. Weeping may endure for a night. Oh, man, but after a while, by and by, joy. Oh, I preach if y'all hear me here. Coming in the morning. Let those three words, number one, uh, those three words, the first word is favor, the second word is weeping, uh, but that third word is joy, uh, coming in the morning, uh, talk to me somebody, uh, and I just want to ask David, uh, David, what are you looking for, what are you waiting for, David, uh, he said, I'm waiting uh, for the morning to come, uh, I'm counting down the seconds, uh, I'm counting down the minutes, uh, have you ever had a sleepless night where you just couldn't go to sleep, uh, and you sat there and waited uh, for that sun to come up for that day to break. You said once to get light, I start stirring around. You said once to get light, I'll make the coffee. You said once to get light, I'll turn on the TV. But there's something about the night. Have you ever been through a night? Look like it took so long. Come on y'all. For morning to come. You kept looking at the watch. It wasn't but one after one in the morning. You looked ten minutes later. My God, it was eleven after one. You kept watching that clock and it looked like the sun wouldn't come up long enough. Talk to me, somebody. But after a while, I'll preach if y'all help me. After a while, somebody say, after a while. Open your mouth and say, after a while. By and by, that sun has got to come over that eastern hemisphere. That moon has got to step back so that sun can come and shine. Shine, shine, shine. I'm waiting. I said, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting on my morning. We've been made to it for a night, but joy coming in the morning. Is there anybody in here waiting on your morning? Shake your neighbor by the hand like you're going to shake it all. And say, I'm waiting on my morning. Give them a high five and say, wait on your morning. It's going to come after a while. Oh, yes, it is. You may be down now. You may be broke now. You may be 
you sick now. You may not have a job now, but hold on. Your morning is coming. Shout yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Your morning is coming. Just keep on waiting. I said keep on waiting. Every now and then when you wait for a bus, you get up off the bus stand and you look down the street to see how far it's coming. Come on, y'all. And when you see it come down the street, you get happy. You forget about all the time you sat waiting. You get happy. You say, here comes the bus. Tell your neighbor, say the bus is down the street. Tell them the bus is down the street. Get your fare ready. Get the exact change. Get your bus fare ready. Get your transfer ready. The bus is coming up. Say yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm wet. May do more than that. But joy coming in the morning. And David said, when he do it for me, talk to me. When he do it for me, in my prosperity, I said, I shall never, I shall never be moved. In other words, now that I'm in the morning, I ain't gonna forget who brought me here. Took a long time to get here. Oh, come on, y'all. But I ain't gonna forget who brought me here. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Who brought you here? Jesus. I said, who brought you here? Jesus. Weeping may endure for a night. Yes. A joy. Yes. Coming in the morning. Yes. What you waiting on? Yes. Waiting on my morning. Because yes. I know just a show has its night. Daytime got to come. Yes. Huh? Well, the butchers got to come. Yes. Look out there. Look out there now. It's day nine. Yes. Ain't it day nine? I say, ain't it day now? I uh, look back out there again about a quarter after eight. And see, when it start getting dark. And we're going into February, which is fall. So now we got to change the time and fall backwards. So you spring forward, you fall backwards. So now when we spring backwards, it's going to get dark earlier. Come on, y'all. Uh, but I don't care if they change it two times a year. They can't change the fact that after a while, it's going to get dark. Yes. And after a while, it's going to get day. So what are you saying, Pastor Mitchell? I'm saying this. No matter what you're going through, realize it ain't going to be like this always. A change has got to come. Will you tell somebody a change has got to come? Change has It ain't going to be like this always in your life. Change has got to come. Time brings about a what? Change. You believe that, Robert? Time brings about a change. Yes. And it ain't going to rain all the way. Mm -mm. I said it ain't going to rain all the time. Amen. I used to get discouraged as a little boy, and I hated Alabama because it rained so much, and we couldn't go out and play. And I said, when I get grown, I'm going to leave Alabama. If I didn't have sense enough to know it rained in Georgia just like it rained in Alabama. But I just hated the rain because it kept us from going out to play. But then I realized as I got older, Robert, that even though it rained today, the sun will be out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It can't rain 365 days a year. We ain't in no tropical region. Huh? Even in Alaska, it's night for so many months. Six. In Alaska. Mm -hmm. But even after it's night for so many months, it eventually got to go back to day. I forget how many months uh, standing six. around the world, how many months six. is dark in Alaska. It's six. Isn't that something? That's a long time. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine waiting for the sun to come up and it don't ever come up? Yeah. All the time. And them people out there, especially them people out there in the bush and way out there in the woods of uh, uh, Alaska, they, they go crazy. They have to stay in that cabin when it's winter for so long, they call it cabin fever. I mean, they've even got to where they can't stand to be around each other no more. Mm. Closed up in that little face. Say amen. Amen. I don't care, uh, 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 Robert, if you had Halle Berry in there, you get tired of her after a while. <laughs> Beyonce was in there. I get tired of her. <laughs> Somebody say, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Who got what I was trying to preach just now? If you can just hold on and believe God, 
Will you look at somebody? Look at say neighbor. Neighbor. Look at somebody only looking at nobody. Get somebody to look at. It. Neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. However you having it now. However you having it now. You ain't gonna have it like that forever. You ain't gonna have it like that forever. Who believe that? Let me see your hands if you believe it. So you got to know that. Things are getting better for me right now. Yes. I don't know about y'all, but I'm claiming that. Yes. Things are getting better for me oh, right yes. now. yes, right now. I want you to claim it every day this week. Right Thank now. you. When you get up to go to work or whatever you do, don't start your day off unless you say things are getting better for me right now. Right now. Speak that into existence yeah. and see what it works for you. Yes. Come on, say amen. Amen. But you just got to believe. Yes. You ain't going to go from, from uh, uh, borrowing all the time. You ain't going to borrow all the time. You ain't going to wear hand-me-downs all the time. Thank you, Lord. You ain't going to wear second-hand stuff all the time. Amen. One day, God going to let you get it brand new. Amen. You just got to believe that. Amen. You ain't going to be wishing to be married. After a while, God will bring them. Amen. After a while, you know, you'll be the one throwing the bouquet. Amen. All I say is stay faithful to God. No matter how long God takes, let God take how long as he want to take. But know that the Lord going to bless me with a companion, a wife, a husband, whatever you want. God's going to bless you. You got to believe that. Tell somebody, you got to believe it. You got to believe it. I don't care what it look like. Sometimes it look like ain't nothing happening. Who the hell know what I'm talking about? Sometimes it look like ain't nothing happening. Say, ain't nothing. I don't hear nothing. I don't hear nothing. I don't see nothing. I don't know nothing. What's going on with this? That old devil tried to jump me yesterday. <laughs> that old depression tried to jump me. I was sitting there in the house by nine that morning. That old devil jumped on me with both feet. I got so depressed. And I said, devil, you a liar. Got in that car. Hmm? Got me some gas. Drove on to Charleston. Yeah. Talk to me here. Yeah. I don't do nothing but walk around the streets. Yeah. And for five or six hours, I just walked around Charleston. Yeah. Looking at the beautiful architect, the beautiful homes, and reading all the history and stuff. Sat by the water, sat in the park. Yeah. Huh? Relaxing. Relaxing. Got me some church's chicken. Right. Ain't that, Lizzie? And I was sitting on that park bench. I said to myself, it would be nice to have somebody here with me to enjoy it, but I thank God I'm here. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you have to do little stuff like that to lift yourself. And when I came on back, I felt all right. So thank you, Jesus. But I wasn't going to sit in that house and looking at them four walls and looking at TV. I love TV, but sometimes I don't want no TV. And you start talking to your mind. I must be the only one. No. All kind of crazy stuff come to you. Yes, Shoot that one. Stab that one. Mm. I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> 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 Who can relate to me? All kind of stuff be going on. And those of you, y'all look at me with your eyes. Those of you that got a boyfriend or a wife or companion, you're blessed. You're blessed that you got somebody. That you can spend time with. Yeah. And you can be around and cut up and laugh with. That's a blessing. Amen. Amen. You can struggle with and go to all y'all go to Walmart together and stuff. Go to the movies. Yeah. Go to Sonic. That's a blessing. Yeah. You sing and you ain't got nobody. Nah. Have money and ain't, gonna, you ain't got nobody to give it to. Nobody to spend it on. Mm. The Lord, you done blessed me. Now come on, Jesus. <laughs> need to send that person off I spend up this money <laughs> but those of you that got somebody you better appreciate who you have especially if they're godly people if they love the Lord Amen. If they have way decent I ain't going out there robbing and just get anybody I, I, I'm too old for that I can't go for that no more just the sake of saying I got somebody there with me uh uh cause it'll be easy to get them boogers in it'll be hell to get them out I don't want nobody like that. I don't want nobody off no street. I don't want nobody like that. 
I want who God got for me. Because you get them off the street, they're coming in with gain. They're coming in stealing. Looking at what you got. You don't know what they own or what they're doing. I'm still talking about waiting on the, on the morning. <laughs> I'm still waiting on my morning. Say amen. amen. But I got to endure the night. I got to go through the night. I got to tell God thank you in the night. And after a while, he'll bless you. It'll come in in God's own due time. And check this out. When God do it, it'll be done right. It'll be done right. It won't be no hesitation. It'll be done right. You say, well, Lord, I thank you. So in my conclusion, hang on in there. In his favor is life. We the man do it for a night. But joy coming to the moment. So you hang on in there. Sisters, brothers, deacons, ministers, missionary, mothers. Hang on in there. God is going to bless you. But you got to stay faithful. You got to say, Lord, I'm in it for the end. I'm in it for the long haul. And I'm staying right here. I ain't going nowhere until Jesus tells me to move. But until then, I'm going to stay right here. And I'm going to give him glory. And I'm going to give him praise. The doors of the church are open at this time.